Okay, so hopefully you wrote down all the definitions and what we want to do is apply those definitions. So the first thing that we'll look at is saving money because we all want to save money. So here's the problem. The original price of the phone is $60. You have a 15% discount. Find the sale price. Now, obviously the discount's going to change depending on the problem and the original price will change. So the way we set this up is we're finding 15% of 60. So I have to do something to this percent sign because right now I can't multiply it or divide it. I have to change the way that this 15% looks. So I either have to change it to a fraction or a decimal. The most common thing that students do is they change the percent into a decimal. So remember on the alphabet, if I have the D over there and the P, so I'm going to go left. So the percent, I'm going to move it two places to the left. Technically what you're doing is dividing by 100. And that's going to turn into 15 hundredths. Of means to multiply. So of 60. So 15 percent, move my little multiplication, times 60. So off to the side, 0 0.15 or 15 hundredths, 60. 5 times 0 is 0. 5 times 6 is 30. And add a 0 for my place value. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 6 is 6. 0, 9. Now, remember our, what our reasonable answer is. I'm 15% is a small portion of the 60. So I can't, it wouldn't make sense to have $900 because you can't have 900 when you only had 60 to start with. Again, would it make sense to have my decimal here because 90, we only had 60. So the most reasonable place to put the decimal is right here. If you look at this right here, I have two numbers behind the decimal. I need to have two numbers behind the decimal. One, two. So $9 is my discount. So it's not going to be my sale price. I'm not going to pay $9 for the item. I'm going to pay 60 minus $9. Okay, borrow from this guy. Gives me one. So I'm going to pay $51 is the sale price. Okay, so there's kind of, remember, there's two things you have to do. You have to find the discount, which is $9, but then you have to subtract it from your original price to get your sale price. Okay, so the next one is finding the retail price. And remember, I buy this item at a wholesale price. And so let's say it's $14.50, $14.50. The percent markup that I choose to put on there because I'm the store owner, so I can change this percent to whatever I want, is going to be 140%. So I'm going to take 140% of $14.50. I don't have to put that zero there if I don't want to, but I'll just go ahead and put that there. Now, I have to do something with this percent. I have to change it to either a fraction or a decimal. The most common things that students do is change it to a decimal. So right now, it's, it's here. I'm going from P to the D on the alphabet. So I'm going to go 1, 2. A bird only has two wings. So that helps us remember that it only moves it over twice. So it's going to be 1 and 4 tenths. Of means to multiply. Of 14 50. Okay, so off to the side here, I'm going to set that up for us. And you should be solving this as well. I'm writing this in your notes, not just so you can follow along with me. 4 times 0 is 0. That way you can catch any mistakes that I make. 4 times 5 is 20. Carry that. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 2 is the 18. Carry the 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus the 1 is 5. Add a zero for the place value. One times zero is zero. One times five is five. One times four is four. One times one is one. Zero, zero, eight plus five gives me 13. Five, six, and that's 10. Okay, 
So now I have to place my decimal. I have one, two, three. So I have to go have three places behind the decimal. So you can go back one, two, three. So twenty dollars and thirty cents. Now this is my markup. I'm not quite done yet. This is my percent markup that I'm going to add to the original price. So I have to go back to the $14.50 because that's what I paid. I definitely want to get that back. But then I want to make at least $20.30 as well. So 0, 8, again, notice it's adding. 4, and when it's adding and subtracting decimals, you just line up the dot. And 1 plus 2 is 3. So I'm going to sell the shirt the retail price that I'm going to sell to the customers $34.80. So let's just go back real quick and think about our reasonable answer. I have $14.50. I'm definitely going to round that to $15. So if I did a 100% markup, it would be 15 plus 15, which would give me 30. So I know my answer has to be around 30 because it's a $140 markup. Um, and you could even think if it was 50%, so half of it would be, let's say, 750. But so you get the gist. It's around 30, 30 ish dollars. So I know that I'm in the ballpark with the $34.80. So again, I want to make money, so I have to use a markup to um, get some additional income. Okay, so. Here's again, when you're a salesperson, you're going to sometimes want to work on commission. So the total sales for Lisa were $600. And again, it could be for the month or the quarter or even for the day. The percent commission is 10%. So I want to find what that per commission is. So I'm going to take 10% of 600. So again, I have to do something and change the way this percent looks. So I have to change it to a fraction or a decimal. Yeah, let's go ahead and change that to a decimal. That's what a lot of us like to do. So I'm going to one, two. It's going to make it. You can add the zero if you want. I'll go ahead and add that there for you. But again, it wouldn't make a difference if you drop that zero off. It's still going to be one tenth. Of means to multiply 600. So it's easier for me to do this vertically. So I'm going to do 600 times 0 0.1. Notice I dropped off the 0, but it doesn't matter. Let me close that up. I'm not really happy with that. The way that the, that's working right now. But I'll just keep practicing and hopefully get those numbers a little bit better for you. So 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 0 is 0. 1 times 6 is 6. I have one number behind the decimal place. So I go 1, go back 1. So her commission is going to be $60. Okay. Now you're not adding that to anything because the sale price or her sales, that's something separate. But she's going to get an extra $60 um, income for just for her. Um, so she could be making an hourly wage or she could just be making commission for that day. It really depends. So you work while you go to school during the day. All right, here we go. And profit. We all want to make money. So the income you could think of is what comes in um, to the store or even like for, for me, I get an income on a monthly basis. So this particular problem, the income for the car wash was $1,900. So they made a lot of money. The expenses were $225. It was probably a fundraiser, so the expenses were the, for the soap and the sponges and maybe a hose. So I want to find out how much they made as a profit. So I take my income and I minus my expenses. So let's just borrow from this guy. That's going to give me 5, 7, 6. So that's it. 
That's your profit. Whatever the difference is between what your sales or what you brought in for the day, your income minus your expenses is going to be your profit. So that's something that store owners definitely want to make on a regular basis. Um, so they're not losing money at their business. And I